An interesting question. What inspired me to write The Island Between Our Love? Uh, I'm a person that I like to have pieces of papers and a pen uh, on my person. Uh, wherever I am, if I have an idea, I just like to jot it down. Um, I, if you look at my previous films, they're usually about family, they're uh, so I, basically, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a loving person. I, I like human beings. So I like to write about things that I think that we all can relate to. So, and of course, especially in the era that we are living right now, all this hatred that is going on around the world and uh, being Haitian, knowing that uh, Haiti shares uh, the same land with the Dominican Republic. So and then I know a little bit of the history between the two countries, uh, and that's what prompted me to write about uh, the island between our love, uh, trying to find solutions to this existing problem. And as I always say, it's, uh, the land is not going to go anywhere, so the people have to find a way to coexist. So, and, and I think that that is, that is a story that, that is needed to be told and uh, being Haitian, and I think I should be uh, one of the persons who tell that story as opposed to somebody from Europe and from anywhere else in the Americas, you know. This is how it started. I, uh, I was always interested to be uh, an action star because when I was little, I would go to the movie theater every Sunday to watch a martial arts film, you know, from China, of course. And that's how I ended up uh, being in love with Bruce Lee as, as a martial artist uh, figure. And among all of the uh, action stars, well, he was uh, uh, a distinguished, uh, you know, individual on screen. And, you know, you can see how he moves on screen, so therefore I uh, was a fan immediately. And I was able, like I said, to select him from all the other actors and then uh, use him as my idol, you know, if you will. Being in Haiti, I started to act in the, in the national television. There's a show called Papa Pierre, who is a comedian, so I was part of that. And then from that point forward, I... One, I always wanted to continue that path. Uh, when I came to Boston, I, uh, my English teacher, my ESL uh, teacher, Ines Casademont, was uh, also working in that medium. So therefore, I, I showed her my interest in, uh, in television and stuff like that. So, and uh, she got me under her wings and uh, showed, me the, showed me the rope. So that's how I ended up uh, being a BNN uh, member. So I uh, did the workshop and then I became a producer at the uh, Boston uh, BNN, uh, Boston Neighborhood Network, which is a cable program. And so when I met uh, James Leroy, I should say, so therefore I work with him in a program that he had uh, at that time. So uh, f from that program, I uh, had on camera, which was a component of his program. So, and then it started like that. Uh, and then I had uh, an agent in New York uh, called Actors Rep. So therefore, uh, I couldn't really get roles that I wanted to. So, uh, but I've met 
you know, uh, great uh, directors and, and producers along the way. So then I said, you know what, why don't I just make my own films? So I create opportunities for myself. So and that's how I started uh, writing and develop an interest in being a director. But of course, actor and action star was what I had in mind to be in martial arts movies and stuff like that. So, and then I started writing. Um, I, I did the first, my, my first trials and errors, there were three of them. Uh, the first one was Ready Anytime. The second one was, uh, uh, let me see, The Return of Dead Martial Artists, and then came Tough Decision. So at that time, it was, I was learning the rope. So uh, there was nothing professional. So of course, I made a lot of mistakes and, and there, there were, uh, that was the way I learned, and then my first big production was Struggle. Hey. Hey. Yeah. What's up? Do you have a problem with the people you mentioned in there earlier? I didn't think so. What the fuck do you want? Only cowards like you enjoy abusing women. You're asking for it, man. Because I will kick your little ass the same way I slap that bitch around. Try me. Do you understand the pain she feels? Oh my God. When you're abusing her? Do you? Ah, it's my bitch! Hmm? Ah. No. Ah. I'm gonna let you go. go. You don't even know, Amy! And ah. I don't ever want to see you near her again. You understand me? What? Do you? No! Huh? Do yeah, you? yeah, all right, let okay. me go! So, get out of here. Ah. Ah. Fuck you! Don't you come back here again. I'll kill you the next time. Which is in 2007, I think. And uh, after struggle, it was um, uh, a child's dream. From director Richard Whitmark below, a child's dream. A most unexpected and profoundly moving story. Your boss, he made with that bitch. Special guest, NBC's heroes, Jimmy Jean-Louis. A child's dream, a masterpiece in every sense of the word. You don't even have a dad. All you do is blame it. It's the easiest thing to do. I'm afraid if this happens again, I'm gonna have to write you up for neglect. You've changed your life real good. A child's dream, playing at the John Hancock Hall, June 6, 7 p.m. And then it was Everybody Cheats. So it was uh, after the second film that I met Norman Lang. And uh, so he had watched one of my films uh, which was uh, struggle, and then so Norman liked the idea, the concept of struggle, and which he saw that we all struggling at a point in time in, in different areas because life in general is a struggle, uh, and then so we got together ever since, and we've been working together. So we made a short film first, uh, uh, everybody cheats, and we make it as, we made it as a short and Norman and I worked together on it. And then after that, we ended up making it as a feature film. Uh, and that's the one, Ben's Antoine, who's an act Hollywood actor, he's also a Haitian. And then he uh, acted in that film after that. I showed him, you know, the shot that Norman and I made. And uh, we also uh, got Sarah Bertin, who was uh, Miss Haiti, and she was also a Miss Universe contestant. Um, in the United States, uh, and then so we got her in that film. So basically, from walking around with pen and paper, always writing something, because I hate wasting my time, even if I work like at, at a normal job and stuff like that. But while I'm there, I use up any uh, time that I have while I'm at work, and then I, you know, jot stuff down on paper, and then when I get home, I transferred it to the computer. And so basically that's how I, I started with writing scripts. I should say that every movie that you make, and it has its own challenge. And you will think that the fact that you make more than one film, like it gets easier. Uh, no. In terms of uh, learning experience, uh, 
in terms of knowledge, yes, it gets probably easier in that sense because you are learning more. But in terms of logistics, it's, it, sometimes it gets harder. And uh, normally, I, when I'm working on a film, Norman and I, we like to just have one schedule, like a, a, a complete schedule, meaning if the movie is going to take a, a one month to be shot, we just like to schedule it for that one month or two months, etc. cetera. Uh, but it doesn't always work that way because schedule, as you know it, it's one of the most difficult things, when it, when, especially in independent films. You're working with a bunch of actors that are not always professional, and some of them are, and some of them are novice. And sometimes you see the potential in them and then you see that you can work with them. And, but what I hate the most is uh, when you do audition, and then you ask the actors right at the audition, uh, would you be available in the month of X, Y, Z? And then they say yes at the audition because they want to be part of the project. But not everybody is truthful in terms of saying that, you know, oh, yes, I'm available and I'll be able to shoot, you know, uh, throughout, you know, uh, the whole month that you want me, blah, 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 and I'm available. Especially when you ask them what are your availabilities, and they tell you. And then now when you start production, and then you hear like, oh, this date is not good for me. Well, this date is not good for me. And what happened with schedule, if the schedule was good for group A, and then uh, group B says like, oh, it doesn't work for me, when you change it for group B, then it's no longer good for group A. So then it creates a, a chain, uh, a domino effect, and it affects production. And you know movie making is all about uh, uh, you know, time and, and spending. So as producers, as directors, you don't want to be, you want to cut down on spending, you know, because we are independent film as it is, and we don't have that much resource. So uh, I hate that part. I hate actors who are committed to so many projects at the same time, and they don't have you know, the decency to know that when they do that, they affect, you know, whatever prior production. So if you're going to give priority, give priority to the first production that you assign yourself to and then work your way down with the other production. Say, hey, I'm already engaged with this work or with this project and this is very important. I have to focus and commit to it, you know, and not every actors do that. So I hate that, uh, you know, working with actors who don't understand, you know, the domino effect when they don't keep their word. I met Norman uh, through a professional group uh, called, called Basi Pog, which is, uh, you know, for Final Cut Pro and, uh, you know, films uh, 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 enthusiasts. And uh, so we always go to, to this kind of uh, events. And then um, my movie was raffled there and Norman was the winner of my film. So after watching the film, and then he likes the concept, which was a uh, struggle. So, um, and then, uh, of course, Norman is also a filmmaker. So when he saw the film, he know he wasn't uh, a $1 million budget film. He understands uh, himself the concept of independent film. So he didn't you know, criticize the film uh, in that sense, but he, uh, he saw beyond that and then saw the potential of like he, if he and I joined forces, you know, the stuff that we can do together. And then the good thing is we have a great working relationship. You know, we don't just see us as just, uh, you know, working relationship, but we became good friends. And then my family knows his family, his family knows my family. So, you know, we've been working ever since I, I struggle. I mean, uh, at that time, we started working together in uh, the short Everybody Cheats, you know, but that was the first film that he saw, which is Struggle. So ever since we, you know, the funny thing is too, uh, that's why we work together so well, because he's a professional and I'm a professional, right? We both have our knowledge, but we know that when we work together, it, it always gets better. And then when he's on his own set, if I'm helping him out with his project, so he's the director and I'm the assistant. So basically I follow his order. And then, uh, or if he, you know, we have worked to the point where we are that comfortable, then he can say, what do you think about that angle? And I say, yeah, go ahead and take it. And I have also uh, a suggestion 
And then, so we take each other's suggestion. And, and basically, he doesn't get upset if he tells me, uh, I think you should do this. And I say, ah, that's not what I'm looking for. And then he just like, you know, hold that grudge against me. No, it, you know, he just say, hey, you're the director. So, and, but he, we know we're working for the betterment of the film. So that's what's important. And we haven't had any issue. You know, so we sort of motivate each other. Like he was recently shooting, you know, a film for Halloween, you know what I mean? But, you know, we, sometimes when you have too many uh, cook, uh, chef in the kitchen, so therefore I'm like, okay, guys, listen, let no man concentrate on what he's doing because he's the director and we have to respect that. So it's interesting. It's always been fun working with him. Well, I, I may be the captain of the film, but uh, everyone on board has their role to play. Uh, it's an independent film, don't forget that. And we don't have the resources of Hollywood and other to uh, promote the film on TV and, and for millions of dollars, et cetera. So therefore, it is the sole responsibility of me, myself, the director, and Norman, the assistant director, and Bruno Shackleton, who uh, helped me uh, write uh, the script. And uh, for all of us, the actors combined, the crew members, to know that it's not just uh, with Max film, but it is, I feel like it's my film too because I'm part of it. And we all have a responsibility to go out there, social media, and to tell friends, family members, to motivate people when it's time for grand premiere that they can say, hey, you have to buy tickets to go see the film. That's the only way we can continue making films as independent uh, filmmakers. Because otherwise, uh, yeah, of course, we can't afford to go to uh, Channel 7, uh, Fox 25, and then pay millions of dollars to advertise the film. So we have to do it on a continuous, uh, you know, continuously, and, and social media talk about it, write blogs about it. When, you, when, you, when you're starting out, in just like in a, any uh, field, any professional field, or even amateur for that uh, purpose, you, you can't write a script that involves helicopter, uh, a big hotel, you know, stuff like that. So as, as a writer, you have to keep it simple. You have to know your limit because it's not a book. A book, you can go to the moon. You can create your own um, uh, uh, aircraft and, and shuttle for that matter, but this is a movie we're talking about. If you're gonna do the same thing that you do when you're writing a book, then you are looking at a million dollar film, you know, or 50 million and so forth. So you keep it simple. Well, you know when you're writing a script, uh, first you have the idea and you jot it down, so as a framework. And then you make a list. Well, that's, I, I'm telling you about how I do it. Uh, I'm not considering myself as, as a great writer, uh, any of that, but I have a story to tell. I think anybody can tell a story, and you can tell me how to tell my story. You may not like my film, but you can tell me how to tell my story. So you choose your way to tell your story, but you, you have some guidelines, you know. You, you have the framework, like the outline, and then you make lists of, uh, you know, the scenes and, uh, you know, what the character will be doing, and then you always make sure that uh, the story is being told in a way that there could be like the, the, the storyline and then there's a subplot and then you try to keep you know the audience you know uh, guessing you don't want to reveal a certain thing but uh, and then try to make sure that you seize the audience attention for the very first five ten minutes of the film and then also try to introduce uh, introduce you know, most of the characters within a certain amount of time on screen so that people can follow, follow the story. Yeah, well, for every film that I make uh, or that Norman and I and whoever else that I work with is work together, we always want to showcase the film. Of course, that's the main reason why uh, you do the film because you're telling a story. So, and uh, what director or filmmakers wouldn't want to see their film being displayed on the silver screen? You know, and uh, Norman and I, we have done that, and we are very proud of our accomplishment in terms of, uh, uh, you know, having our movie played at the Showcase Cinema in Dedham. And we all know Showcase is one of the 
uh, brand name that in different states and stuff, and it's, you know, to, to have your movie playing there, yes, we, we did that, and we intend to uh, follow that same venue uh, to, ha to have uh, the island between our love, which is a, a story that needed to be told, and it's not just for the Haitians, not just for the Dominican Republic, because the story concerned them, but also uh, throughout the hatred, like I said, in the whole world, uh, everybody can see, every country can see their resemblance within, within that story to see how love can bring, uh, you know, two countries together. And uh, showing it at a big, uh, you know, cinema and will be ideal and what we're looking to do but we need the support of the community we also need the support of the actors or everyone uh, that is involved in the film in order to make that happen